The tugboat, for its size, is the most powerful craft afloat, and Captain Starr and his tugs are the power between the docks and the waterways that make up the big city port. This is Tugs. Tugs videos are available now from Castle Vision. Also on the Castle Vision label, the Raggy Dolls. And fun and adventure down on Tumbledown Farm. Just part of the superb range from Castle Vision. Raggy dolls were out in the field, trying to decide what to do. Let's play leapfrog, suggested Dotty. Oh, yes, what a good idea, agreed Princess. Sounds good, 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 good to me, said Hi-Fi. Well, what is this leapfrog, asked Claude. How do you play it? It's rotten, said Sad Sack. All you do is bend over and everyone jumps over you. Then you have to jump over everyone else. Well, what is wrong with that? demanded Claude. I could never jump over anyone else. I always squash them. Besides, I'm no good at games. Oh, come along, sad sack. Do buck up, said Dotty. There must be something you can do. But sad sack just sighed. <sighs> no, there isn't. All the dolls felt very sorry for him. I know, said Lucy suddenly. Why don't we all have a game of cricket? We can all be fielders and Sad Sack can be in bat. Come on, Sad Sack, play. OK, said Sad Sack. Dotty took a long time to run up. Well, it's now or never, thought Sad Sack. She tossed the ball so fast it made a big cloud of dust as it bounced in front of the wicket. How's that? yelled Dotty, thinking she'd hit the stumps. Achoo! I'm not out, sneezed Sad Sack. Bad as he was at games, he wasn't going to be out first ball. You're out, insisted Dotty. Not out, argued Sad Sack. The two dolls couldn't agree. Hi-Fi tried to settle things. He tried to reason with them. Oh, these crazy English, thought Claude. What a stupid game. I want no part of it. Lucy was confused. She couldn't make up her mind. She wobbled about, all of a dither. With all that dust, who could be sure? This is a decision for the umpire, said Princess. Everyone, including Claude, cheered up immediately. Right, said Dotty, and the others agreed. But back to front, who was the umpire, hadn't been watching the game. He was staring up at the sky. What on earth is that? said back to front. It's called an aeroplane, said Hi-Fi. Ooh, yeah, said back to front. Hi-Fi went on to explain how aeroplanes flew all over the world, taking people wherever they wanted to go. 
How exciting it would be to fly in one, thought Princess. I wonder, do they by any chance visit La France, thought Claude. The dolls watched in amazement as the aeroplane twisted and dived and looped the loop. What they didn't know was that it was a toy aeroplane belonging to a boy in the next field. He was making it fly by remote control. Now he was ready to try the most daring trick of all, the victory roll. At the flick of a switch, the aeroplane went into a steep dive, then spun round and round, twisting through the sky like a giant corkscrew as it plunged towards the ground. m m, -m mayday Help! Emergency! It's g, -g going to crash! Ah! <gasps> oh! <gasps> The dolls were quickly on the scene. Thank goodness no one's hurt, smiled Princess. They all studied the wreckage. Hi-Fi suggested that they could mend it and fly it themselves. What a good idea, they all agreed. Even Sad Sack. Well, it's worth a try, he thought. I'll fix this in a jiffy, no problem, thought back to front. Claude carried the propeller, Hi-Fi and Lucy carried a wing, and the others got behind the rest of the aeroplane and pushed it. This is better than cricket, thought Sad Sack. Meanwhile, the boy was searching everywhere for his lost aeroplane. He didn't know about the dolls. He didn't know that they had found his aeroplane, and they were all hard at work. Sewing, painting, and fixing. Before long, the aeroplane was looking as good as new. That about does it, said Hi-Fi. Time to see if it will fly. It was a moment of great excitement. Hi-Fi climbed into the pilot seat. Back to front sat in the observer's seat, while the others found themselves a safe place on the wings. Everybody hold tight, called Sad Sack. And on a signal from Hi-Fi, he whirled the propeller. This was the moment they had all been waiting for. The engine roared, and slowly the aeroplane moved forward. Then they felt it lift. The raggy dolls were flying. Hi-Fi took the aeroplane very high. How small things looked from this height. Houses and trees were like tiny dots. Ooh la la, thought Claude. It is very breezy. I wonder how long it will take to get to France. But Hi-Fi wasn't thinking about France. He wanted to try some aerobatics. The dolls felt their tummies turn over as the aeroplane looped the loop. Soon, they were whizzing over the treetops. I suppose this is fun, thought Sad Sack. I think it could be cheering me up. Hi-Fi was thinking it was time to stop. They were running out of fuel. So, with a hop and a bump, the aeroplane landed safely on the field. Hi-Fi looked pleased with himself. Well, oh, Hi-Fi, said Princess. 
You have given us a flight we shall remember forever. Even Sadsack agreed. All this time, the boy had been searching for his aeroplane. Where could it be? Suddenly, there it was, right in front of him. He was delighted. He could hardly believe his eyes. It was looking as good as new. That was great fun, said Lucy. Oh, yes, said Sadsack. I think I shall become an aeroplane pilot. Hmm, muttered Dotty. I think you should learn to play cricket before you learn to fly. I seem to remember bowling you out. No, you didn't bowl me out. You missed. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Did. Didn't. Did. Didn't. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dog. Raggy dog. Raggy dog. One morning, when the raggy dolls were getting up, Hi-Fi and Back to Front noticed Sad Sack had a very long face. Well, 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 what's wrong? asked Hi-Fi. Sad Sack was close to tears. I'm too fat, he blurted. My stomach, it's too big and too soft. Then you should come walking with us said back to front. The exercise will do you power a good. Hmm. <laughs> exercise, thought Sad Sack. That's all very well for some, but they don't have all this weight to carry. He looked down at his big soft stomach. The last thing I want is exercise. So Hi-Fi and back to front set off on their early morning walk without him. They were making their way towards the big field when they noticed a group of men carrying a large straw basket. The dolls ducked out of sight and watched as the men put the basket down. I wonder what they're going to do, asked Back to Front. They're pro probably having a picnic, crackled Hi-Fi. The men seemed to be excited about something. One of them took out a stopwatch. On your marks, get set, go! To the doll's great surprise, a flock of pigeons flew up out of the basket. Wow, 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 it's a pigeon race. The pigeons flew off at great speed. One pigeon was already way out in front of the others, but curious to see how far in front he was, the pigeon turned his head. La la look, exclaimed Hi-Fi. He's tra traveling in one direction and looking in the other. There's nothing clever in there. In case you hadn't noticed, I do it all day long. The pigeons slowly disappeared over the horizon. The 
men carried the empty basket back across the field. Hi-Fi and Back to Front continued their walk. They set off out into the countryside, enjoying the fresh morning air. Soon they came to Pumpernickel's field. Pumpernickel the Scarecrow was always on duty guarding his patch of corn. But it was a lonely old job, and he was always pleased when any of the raggy dolls came by. Good morning, dolls. M -m morning Good morning, Pumpernickel. Hi-Fi and Back to Front marched on. But by now, they were feeling the strain of all their walking. I do feel tired. Mamma me to to too. So they sat down for a rest. But they'd hardly relaxed for a second when they heard a faint cry. Oh, help! They looked around, but there was no one in sight. Oh, help! This time they looked up, and there above them, entangled in the wires, was the pigeon that had been leading the race. Hi-Fi and back to front clambered up the telegraph pole and quickly reached the pigeon. Don't you worry, boy. No problem. We'll soon have you free. And with the utmost care, the dolls untangled the pigeon from the wire. There now. You're free to fly home. But I can't fly home. My pigeon, my wing. The poor pigeon was stuck. He couldn't fly off, and he couldn't get down. This is an emergency. There's only one more one thing to do. He quickly took off his headphones and yelled into the earpiece. Raggy dolls to the rescue. It was the raggy doll's own secret call sign. As if by magic, the raggy dolls appeared from every direction. What's the emergency? How can we help? It's the pigeon. He's hurt his wing and can't f fly. I can give him some first aid, said Lucy. Good. But first, we must find a way to get him down. Just then, Sad Sack came running along. <laughs> Sorry I'm late. But I'm just too fat to cope with these emergencies. That's all right. No problem. In fact, being fat makes you the only doll that can help. Sad Sack could hardly believe his ears. What, me? Help? But how? He asked. Back to front got him to lie on the ground directly beneath the pigeon. Now, pigeon, go on the count of three. Jump! One, two, three, jump! The pigeon jumped and landed safely on Sad Sack's big, soft stomach. Oh, thank you for letting me land on you. Oh. I'm happy to have helped, replied Sad Sack. Lucy took Claude's neck scarf and made it into a sling to support the pigeon's injured wing. All you need now is a good rest and food to restore your energy. Lucy told the pigeon, but the pigeon didn't need telling. He was so exhausted by his ordeal, he'd fallen asleep. The doll tiptoed quietly away so as not to disturb him. As the pigeon slept, he dreamed of his home, his feed tray full of corn, and his owner, proudly polishing all the cups and medals he'd won at pigeon racing. After his sleep, the pigeon woke up feeling very hungry. The dolls arrived with perfect timing. I've brought you some beef burgers, said Hi-Fi. Oh, thank you, said the pigeon. He looked at the dolls. They were all carrying food they'd brought especially for him. Princess had a portion of strawberry ice cream, back to front, some banana-flavored milkshake, and Dotty, some chocolate mousse, and Claude had cooked a special recipe, a bowl of French onion soup. The pigeon was very embarrassed. Oh, I don't know how to tell you this. Oh, but I'm afraid we pigeons don't eat beef burgers, nor ice cream, nor chocolate mousse, nor milkshake, and certainly not French onion soup. Claude was livid. Then I will eat the soup myself. Please, 
don't worry about the food. We'll see that nothing goes to waste. But do tell us, what do pigeons eat? Just then, along came Sadsack. He was carrying some corn. The pigeon's eyes lit up. Oh, oh, that's what pigeons eat. I told Pumpernickel all about our rating pigeon rescue. And Pumpernickel said, Although scarecrows don't usually give pigeons corn, this is a very special case. So he sent you this corn with his best wishes. Oh, oh, that was kind, said the pigeon, and tucked into the corn. Oh, oh, I feel much better now. Oh, I think I'll try and play home. I think we should try some wing flapping exercises first. The pigeon agreed. Lucy removed the sling from the pigeon's wing. Good. Follow me. And she flapped her arms up and down, up and down. The pigeon did exactly the same, flapping his wings. Lucy flapped harder and harder, and so did the pigeon, who suddenly took off. The pigeon soared high in the sky, and tipping his wings in a goodbye wave, he flew off towards home. The raggy dolls waved back, but Claude was still hungry. Yeah, surely it must be time to eat. The dolls agreed, and they all tucked into a scrumptious picnic of beef burgers, banana milkshakes, strawberry ice cream, and chocolate mousse. of a life when you're just a pretty face Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace Look around and you will find People of every kind Like the raggy dolls Raggy dolls Dolls like you and me Raggy dolls Raggy dolls Made imperfectly So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees And your fingers are all bones Stand on your two left feet and join a raggy doll chum. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls, are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, made imperfectly. So if you got a bump on your nose or lumps on your toes, do not despair. Be like the raggy doll and say I just don't care. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls, are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. Early mornings were always a busy time for Mr. Grimes. He'd already unlocked the doors, turned off the burglar alarm, switched on the machinery, checked the boiler, inspected the stores, and now he was opening the post. Bills, 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 he grumbled, and more bills. Just then, there was a loud knock, and a head popped around the door. What can I do for you? snapped Mr. Grimes. The stranger reached in his pocket and pulled out a card. Mr. Grimes squinted at it through his glasses. It said, C, C, T. Uh, my name's Martin, said the man. Toby Martin. I'm the chief collecting officer for Children's Charity Toys. Uh, C, C, T? <laughs> C, C, T? Never heard of it, said Mr. Grimes unhelpfully. We collect broken and unwanted toys, explained the man. We repair them and deliver them as good as new to children's homes and hospitals throughout the country. All right, all right, interrupted Mr. Grimes. You can have everything that's in the reject bin for your charity, and good riddance. Thanks, ever so, said the man. Very generous, I'm sure. 
in no time at all. The raggy dolls were thrown into the back of a van and driven off. It was a dark and bumpy ride. Oh dear, whatever is going to become of us? Worried Lucy. Back up everyone, this is an adventure, said Dotty. Yeah, said Back to Front. I wonder where we're going. The van drove through a gate and entered a field. I can hear my music, crackled Hi-Fi. How exciting, cried Princess. It sounds like a f -f fun fair. Fun fair? Fun for who, said Sam Sack. Not us, I bet. Toby Martin parked his van outside a large square tent and went inside. The raggy dolls could hear the sound of hammering. Then it stopped. Watch out, he's coming back, warned back to front. Toby Martin gathered up all the dolls as if they were dirty washing. He was so rough, Lucy got all tangled up. She began to tremble. Don't worry, whispered back to front. We'll soon straighten you out, no problem. Inside the tent, there was a coconut shy, and above it, a rope with hooks dangling down, one hook above each coconut. Toby Martin attached the dolls by their clothes to each hook. Then he went outside and shouted, Roll up, roll up, win a prize doll. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts, 10 pence to throw. A crowd soon gathered. Hmm, some charity, sniffed Dotty. All morning, people paid to have a throw at the coconuts, and soon, Toby Martin had collected a pile of money. Hour after hour, balls whizzed through the air. Sometimes they hit the coconuts, and sometimes they hit the raggy dolls. Ooh. I knew it. Fun fairs. They're neither fun nor fair, thought Sad Sack. Oh! The strange thing was, that no matter how hard people hit the coconuts, they never fell off their perches. At 12 o'clock, Toby Martin collected his takings and went to have some lunch. Quick, now's our chance, cried Dotty. We must try and escape. Oh yes, agreed Princess. But how? For the first, we must f free ourselves from these hooks, said Hi-Fi. But it was easier said than done. I can't even see my hook, said Sad Sack. I suppose it's to do with not having much of a neck. But at that moment, back to front, who could see his hook easily, managed to free himself. No problem, he cried, as he landed on the coconut below. But then he became suspicious. Hello, he thought. Why doesn't this coconut wobble? Back to front, took a closer look. Aha, I get the picture, he said at last. So that's what all the hammering was about. What do you mean? Demanded Claude, impatient to get down. Back to front explained. He's knocked nails into all the coconuts to stop them falling off. I knew it, said Dotty. We are in the hands of a swindler. Mr. Toby Martin is nothing but a rotter and it's our duty to expose his evil ways. Oh yes, I quite agree, agreed Princess. But how? Meanwhile, back to front had been busy. He'd found Toby Martin's box of tools, and now he was pulling out the nail in the coconut under Lucy. Well done, back to front, said Dotty. Now do all the others. But it was too late. Toby Martin was outside the tent again. Roll up, roll up, win a prize doll. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts, ten pence to throw. Just in time, as Toby Martin let the new crowd in, back to front hid himself. Fortunately, Toby Martin was so busy looking after his customers that he never noticed one of the raggy dolls was missing. Once again, balls whizzed through the air. But this time, one of them hit Lucy's coconut and knocked it clean off its perch. Hooray! I've won a prize! cried the man who had thrown the ball. Toby Martin was amazed.
The last thing he expected to see was one of the coconuts on the ground. He thought quickly. Uh, no, you haven't one. Uh, you've got to knock it off three times. The man was in no mood to be trifled with. Give me my prize, he demanded. Someone in the crowd shouted, Look, there's a nail! The people soon put two and two together and realized that all the coconuts were nailed to their shies. Give us our money back, they cried. Thief! Swindler! They were absolutely furious. They shouted so loudly that the boss of the fun fair heard them from the other end of the field and came to see what was happening. When he saw the nail and the coconut on the ground, the pile of money and the angry crowd, he soon kicked Toby Martin out. Don't you ever come back, he called after him. This is a respectable place, not for the likes of you. Toby Martin hid behind his van as all the coconuts came flying out of the tent, closely followed by the raggy doll. Now move, skedaddle, beat it, shouted the boss, or else. And while the crowd jeered and booed, the raggy dolls made good their escape. At last, when they thought they were quite safe, the raggy dolls stopped to catch their breath. What a fr frightful m man. There are some adventures not worth having, agreed Dotty. <sighs> oh, dear, puffed Sad Sack. All this excitement doesn't agree with me. I'm half the doll I used to be. I'm not surprised, panted Lucy. That hook has made a hole in your back and all your stuffing's coming out. Oh, no groaned Sad Sack. Everything happens to me. The raggy dolls carried Sad Sack the rest of the way home. Back in the factory, they soon found a box of stuffing and a bottle of glue. Hold your breath, said Dotty. Sad Sack held his breath as Hi-Fi poked stuffing back into the hole. When it was full again, Lucy dabbed on some glue. Sad Sack looked his old self again. Well, almost. Uh, he is looking a little lumpy, Nespa, said Claude. No problem, replied Back to Front. Dotty will soon knock him back into shape. Thump him, Dotty. Righto, said Dotty. Um, uh, thanks, Dotty, said Sad Sack. But uh, that's enough for now. If you don't mind, I think I'll have a lie down. It's been one of those days. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dog. Raggy dog. Raggy dog. Raggy dog, raggy dog, made him perfectly. So if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees, then your fingers are all fun. Stand on your two left feet and join our raggy dog chunk. Cause raggy dog, raggy dog, are happy just to be. Raggy dog, raggy dog, dogs like you and me. One morning, Claude got up very early to make the raggy dolls a surprise breakfast. 
He changed his beret for a chef's hat, put on an apron, and set off for the factory canteen. He was going to make a continental breakfast. Croissants and coffee, as we have it in France, he thought. He mixed the pastry and rolled and rolled and rolled it into a long strip. It was a complicated recipe. But at last, the croissants were safely in the oven. Then Claude poured some coffee beans into the grinder. Soon, the works canteen was filled with a delicious smell of baking and freshly ground coffee. Wake up! Wake up! shouted Claude. He banged a frying pan with a spoon to make it sound like a gong. Oh! Whatever's that? The f factory's on f, f fire Keep calm, everybody! Oh dear, I'm all of a tremble. Dotty was the first to peer over the top of the reject bin. It's only Claude, she said crossly. Really, Claude, you might have more consideration. Can I smell baking? Sniffed Sadsack. You most certainly can, said Claude. And can I smell coffee? But of course you can, said Claude again. Mesdames, messieurs, breakfast is served. The Raggy Dolls made their way into the canteen. Claude had laid the table in the French way. There was a dish of butter balls and a bowl of black cherry jam and napkins. There was even a red check tablecloth. Voila, exactement as we have it in France, he explained. I have made a continental breakfast. Bon appetit. That means eat up, said Dottie. What a super surprise, Claude. Pity it isn't bacon and eggs and fried bread, thought Sadzak. That's what I call breakfast. But by the time he'd eaten his sixth croissant and washed it down with a seventh cup of coffee, he decided French breakfasts were just as good as English ones. But he had to leave a pile of croissants for later because he was full to bursting. Just then, the factory hooter started up. People would be arriving for work any minute. Luckily, there wasn't much to clear away. But before they could leave the canteen, the Raggy Dolls heard voices. There was just time to hide before Mr. Grimes came in with Florrie Fosdyke, the canteen lady. Florrie was kind, but very forgetful. One morning, she buttered the teapot and poured milk on the toast. You must keep your wits about you today, Flo, said Mr. Grimes. There's a competition for all the factories on the trading estate. Each canteen has to make a cake, and the best cake wins a prize. And I want Grimes' toy factory to win that first prize tomorrow, Flo. You won't be disappointed, sir, said Florrie Fosdyke. She flicked through the pages of her recipe book. There was a large picture of a sponge cake with layers of raspberry jam filling topped with marshmallow and chocolate sauce. Mr. Grimes agreed that that was the kind of cake most likely to win. The Raggy Dolls watched as Florrie set out everything she needed on the table. A mixing bowl, scales to weigh things, and a spoon for stirring. The sponge cake recipe said one cup of flour three quarters of a cup of sugar, half a packet of margarine, two large eggs, and a little water. For the filling and topping, it said half a jar of raspberry jam, one bag of mixed marshmallows, pink and white, and a slab of melted cooking chocolate. Oh, groaned Sadsack. If only I hadn't eaten so much breakfast. Claude looked on with interest as Florrie set to work. Butter cake, butter cake, baker's man. Bake me a cake as fast as you can. Rick it and lick it and mark it with G. 
And there will be plenty for Grimesy and me. Flory sang as she worked and forgot to look at the recipe book. She's p -p -p putting the sh shells in with the eggs, crackled High Five. That's never one cup of flour, whispered Lucy. More like a bucketful, agreed back to front. Now she's adding salt instead of sugar, Princess gasped. Sacre bleu! This is an outrage, spluttered Claude. Flory poured the awful mixture into two sandwich tins and put them in the oven, which she turned up much too high. Then she set off with her trolley to see if anyone in the factory wanted a quick cup of tea. By the time she came back, the cake was beginning to burn. Funny, what's that smell? thought Flory Fuzzdyke. She'd forgotten all about baking a cake for the factory competition. She looked at the oven. Smoke was curling out. Then she remembered. Oh, heck, yes. Well, uh, oh, never mind. I'll tell Mr. Grimes it's a chocolate cake. He'll never know the difference. When the cake was cool, Flory dolloped the raspberry jam between the layers and covered the top with melted chocolate and marshmallows. It didn't look anything like the picture in the recipe book. Mmm, not bad. It's quite eye-catching she thought. When Flory had gone home, the Raggy Dolls went to see what the cake looked like. Perhaps it wasn't as bad as they thought, but it was. I don't think Grimes' toy factory has much chance of winning that competition tomorrow, do you? said Sad Sack. Yeah, about as much chance as an egg in a concrete mixer, <laughs> chuckled back to front. It's no laughing matter, said Dotty. The honour of the factory is at stake. Claude was disgusted. He sat with his head in his hands, muttering in French. Quel dommage. Juste ciel. Zut alors. Then suddenly he jumped up. I have it, he cried. I, Claude the chef, will bake another cake to replace that, how you say, thing. What a spiffing idea, said Dotty. Oh, yes, agreed Princess. Claude is ever such a good cook. Action stations, cried back to front. Raggy dolls to the rescue. There was plenty of flour, chocolate, sugar and marshmallows left in the larder. But no eggs or raspberry jam. We can use what's left of the cherry instead of raspberry jam, said Princess. It was absolutely delicious at breakfast. Good thinking, agreed Dotty. But what about the eggs? Lucy went to see if the hens had laid anything lately. This time, everything worked. There was even some chocolate sauce and marshmallows left over. It was a splendid cake. Super! Well done, chaps, said Dotty. Mr. Grimes should be ever so pleased, said Lucy. And he certainly was, because next day, Claude's cake won first prize. <laughs> Flory Fosdyke didn't know how it came to have black cherry jam in it instead of raspberry jam, but she put it down to forgetfulness. Sadzak hadn't forgotten the leftovers. Claude lent him his chef's cap and apron. And for breakfast next day, Sad Sack invented a new recipe. Leftover croissants with leftover marshmallows and chocolate sauce. It's called the Raggy Dolls Special, said Sad Sack, licking the spoon. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty face. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace Look around and you will find People of every kind Like the Raggy Dolls Raggy Dolls Dolls like you and me Raggy Dolls Raggy Dolls Made imperfectly So if 
if you're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all fuzz, stand on your two left feet and join our raggy doll chums. Cause raggy dolls, raggy dolls are happy just to be. Raggy dolls, raggy dolls, dolls like you and me. postman brought Mr. Grimes a large letter. Uh. And shortly afterwards, the Raggy Dolls heard him shouting, No, no, no! Never again! Something's upset him, said Dotty. Let's go and investigate. So when the coast was clear, they crept into Mr. Grimes' office, and in his waste paper basket, they found a photograph torn in half. It's Oz and Boz, Mr. Grimes' twin nephews, said Dotty. Zut alors! They look like uh, little monsters, exclaimed Claude. D -d -d Don't worry, said High Five reassuringly. I've heard Mr. G -G Grimes talking to them on the t -t telephone. He always sh -sh shouts, so they must live a l long way away. Good, said Back to Front. Then they're not likely to come here, are they? Famous last words, thought Sad Sack. Outside, a taxi was ticking over. It had just brought a lady who looked exactly like Mr. Grimes in a skirt. And with her were the terrible twins, Oz and Boz. They were each carrying a suitcase. Uncle, Uncle, where are you? They called. Mr. Grimes opened the door and shut it again fast. Now, now, Grimesy, said his sister. That's no way to welcome your family. Go away, said Mr. Grimes. Shan't, won't, shouted the twins. They've come to stay the weekend, said Mr. Grimes' sister. Never again, said Mr. Grimes. On the contrary, Grimesy, said his sister. I told you in my letter, I need a rest. The Raggy Dolls saw her drive away in the taxi, while Mr. Grimes led Oz and Boz indoors. We'll have to lie low till they're gone, said Dotty. Out of sight, out of mind, agreed Princess. We'll stay in our bin. Yeah, no problem. And we'll only t -t -t talk at n -n night. Good thinking. I won't even talk then, whispered Lucy. We're in for trouble, thought Sad Sack. You mark my words. Sure enough, the Raggy Dolls were hardly back in their bin before they heard footsteps and Mr. Grimes' voice saying, This way, lads. There's some dolls in here y you can play with. Dolls? cried Oz. Dolly Wallies, jeered Boz. Now look here, said Mr. Grimes firmly. There's to be no trouble. Trouble, said Oz, innocently. What do you mean, trouble, said Boz. You know what I mean, said Mr. Grimes. Last time you came, it took me a whole week to clear up after you. You're not going into my factory this time. You can play with these dolls in the yard. Lucy felt a sticky hand around her waist. Then she was lifted high into the air. Gimme, yelled Oz. I want to. Find your own dolly wally, shouted Boz. Oz thought that playing football with Sad Sack would be fun. 
He kicked him high into the air, through the window, and into the branches of a tree. Sad Sack saw the world upside down. He saw the terrible twins in the yard carrying the rest of the ragged dolls. Help! he cried. But no one heard him. Oz grabbed Hi-Fi and Boz grabbed Claude. Sacre bleu! spluttered Claude. This is an outrage! St -st -st Stop it! L -l 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 Let me g -g go! crackled Hi-Fi. These dolls squeak! cried Oz. Look, Boz! They squeak! The terrible twins began jumping up and down on the raggy dolls to make them squeak louder. Go on! Squeak! shouted Oz. Squeak! Squeak! yelled Boz. After a while, they grew tired of jumping and decided to dig a hole in the yard to see if they could reach Australia. Give me that spade! shouted Boz. Sharp! screamed Oz. Give me it! No! It's my turn. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. Tisn't. Tis. Tisn't. Tis. Tisn't. Tis. By lunchtime, there were holes all over the yard with mounds beside them like molehills. When Mr. Grimes saw them, he was furious. Look what you've done. After lunch, you can fill them all up again. Said Mr. Grimes, grimly. Quick, said Dotty. Now's our chance to escape. Is everyone here? I'm here. And here. And there. And over there, called Lucy, who'd been pulled about so much she was scattered all over the place. R -r -r Raggy dolls to the r -r rescue, cried Hi-Fi. He picked up one of Lucy's arms. Princess picked up the other. Claude fetched her head. Here's one of your legs, Lucy, said Back to Front. Where's the other? She wailed. I've lost a leg. Oh, heck. Search the yard, everybody, ordered Dotty. But at that moment, out came the terrible twins again. Follow me, hissed Dotty. She led the way to an old tarpaulin, which they all agreed would make a good hiding place till Oz and Boz left. It wasn't until they were safely underneath that Princess realized someone was missing. Oh dear, where's Satsack? she cried. Oh, he is still up in that tree, said Claude, and those monster boys are trying to knock him down. Stop that! called Mr. Grimes. I want all those holes filled in by tea time, or there'll be no tea. It's not fair, muttered Oz and Boz. Uncle's a meanie. But they left Sad Sack alone and set to work. At last, all the holes were filled in, and the yard was back to normal. The terrible twins were so tired they ate their chocolate biscuits quietly and watched television till bedtime, like ordinary children. Outside in the moonlight, the raggy dolls were rescuing Sad Sack. Go on, jump, called Dotty. You can't stay up there forever. All he has to do is close his eyes, said Claude. Yeah, no problem, agreed back to front. One, two, three, jump called all the raggy dolls together. Help! cried Sad Sack, and he jumped. He's only a bit winded, said Dotty. He'll be all right in a moment. Can we find my other leg now? asked Lucy, anxiously. We can t -t try, said Hi-Fi, but, but, but I'm afraid it's got b buried in one of the first holes, and we c can't undig them all again. Oh, dear, cried Princess. Poor Lucy. She'll have to hop on one leg for the rest of her life. No, she won't, said Sad Sack, sitting up suddenly. Here it is, in one of the holes. And he pulled the missing leg out of the loose earth underneath him. 
Chino landed in just the right spot, said Dotty. Well done. Oh, Sadza, you are clever, cried Lucy. The raggy dolls went to sleep under the tarpaulin and didn't wake up again till the sun was high in the sky and the terrible twins had gone home with their mother. They can't come visiting ever again, said Mr. Grimes. No, no, no. And this time, I really mean it. Never. It's not much of a life when you're just a pretty thing. Just to be whoever you are is no disgrace. Look around and you will find people of every kind. Like the raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, dolls like you and me. Raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog, raggy dog. You're not at ease with your knobbly knees and your fingers are all thumb. Stand on your two left feet and join a raggy doll chunk. 